I was born in May 1935, and I was four pounds. I was a sickly child the first five years. I had really low energy as a toddler up until I was five years, and my parents kept taking me from one doctor to another. Nobody could figure out what was wrong with me. And then my parents took me to a doctor in Pottstown who prayed for me. And the doctor said to my parents, when you go home, you will see a difference in your child tomorrow. And my parents did. I grew up in a very loving, uh, stress-free environment with my parents and my only sister. I was in elementary school that I went to an after-school Bible club. I saw this lesson on the second coming of Christ and I wanted to make sure that I was going to heaven and that's when I accepted the Lord as my savior. During that time that we also were, went to Waldheim Park to summer camp, I became very interested in missions because there was a missionary there. And at lunchtime she would say, where the Lord leads me, I will follow and what he feeds me, I will swallow. I felt the Lord wanted me to be a nurse. I wanted to go out to West Suburban in Oak Park, Illinois, because it was affiliated with Wheaton College. Every semester for three years, we had Bible. Well, I really wanted that. So my parents <laughs> took me. They supported me all the way. While I was there, I became a part of student of the Student Missions Fellowship Group. I was involved in missions the whole time that I was out there. And I got involved when I got home with the church that I grew up in. And the pastor asked if I would take charge of the missionary conference. I was very actively doing that besides I was teaching at, at Reading Hospital School of Nursing. So I was very busy. My mother never drove, but she wanted to patronize a small grocery store three miles away. So we went and <laughs> the daughter of the owner, her fiance was there and he carried all my groceries out and put it in the car. And he said, you should meet my brother. I said, oh, I'm much too busy because I'm in the middle of doing a missionary conference and he said, oh, he's interested in missions too. And I thought, oh, he's probably stringing me along. The next week, someone knocked on the door and here it was, Raymond with Harry, his brother. I gave him an invitation to the missionary conference. I had the brochures all there. And I thought, let's see how much interested he is in missions. So he came. Well, I could hear him laugh in the back of the church. He just enjoyed this person so very much. So I thought, wow, he really is interested and he really seems like he, he wants to be committed to the Lord and mission work. Well, wouldn't you know, 10 months later, we got married and that's how I met my husband, Harry. We lived uh, right, here, right in Mukunji. So in 1969, we came here full-time to Mukunji Baptist. I got involved with the children, and soon I was children's department superintendent, and I got involved in the ladies' work, and oh my, that's, was just, it, the church has been just my life. Besides working, I have three children, uh, my son and my two girls, I have 12 grandchildren who have been taught God's word and many of them are serving the Lord. I must say that music has been a big part of my life. I started playing the piano when I was nine years old. I have played for church services, but the thing that really gives me the greatest joy is to be accompanying others, being a part of an orchestra or, or an ensemble. I also learned to play the organ after I got married. I just enjoy listening to music too. I've been heavily engaged in mission work even though I never got to the field. Even now I'm part of the mission group. Our Women's Missionary Society, I was encouraging the ladies to be praying for the missionaries. Each one of us were either a mission field or a missionary. All those within our circle become our mission field. Harry had a triple bypass and aortic replacement 
the anesthesia uh, brought about dementia. We even went to a concert at Allen, Oregon. And uh, two days later, he had a minor stroke. And I didn't even realize it was a stroke. December 3rd, he was in the hospital. He went to rehab and January 3rd, he passed away. And I was ready to bring him home that morning. And at five o'clock, I got this call saying that he passed and I, oh my word, I wasn't there. I certainly miss him terribly, but he knew, he knew the Lord and I knew where he was. And I just kept doing what I did when he was alive because he encouraged me. And so whether he was there or not, now the Lord had encouraged me to keep going. Adjusting to living alone was really a little difficult in the beginning because Harry and I spent supper and our whole evenings together. But I have my devotions in the morning. I sit at the kitchen table and watch the birds and I just say, Lord, what do you want me to do today? You're never too old to learn. And when you're in the Lord's work, you never retire. Your path may change, but you continue to mentor and pour into the younger people all the things that God taught you your whole life. God's hand was on my life from the time I was very sick until the Lord healed me. And then through nurses training, uh, meeting Harry who loved the Lord, who really was sold out to the Lord and how we served him together and how he continued even after Harry's passing, to keep me involved in serving him wherever he puts me. And I want to continue, even at this age, to follow him till he says, okay, it's time to take your last breath. I am Virginia Langen. I am a voice of NC4.